This podcast is brought to you by you, the listener. And if you want to support the podcast, you can head over to aaapodcast.com slash join or Patreon. We really do appreciate it and it helps us pay all the expenses that we have to cover for this podcast. I just had a giant uh, hosting fee just over the weekend that made me sad. But uh, hey, you won't be sad because you'll get our Hobby Addicts, our Hentai episodes, and our After Parties just as a gift. It's eight exclusive podcasts per month just for you, just for a thank you for supporting the show. So again, if you want to be an anime addict, head over to aaapodcast.com slash join or Patreon. And now, time to start the podcast. Get ready! You're about to listen to the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast. Make your anime addiction worse at aaapodcast.com. And now, here are your anime addicts. Oi, yo, yo, Yoroshiku, Mitsugi in the house for episode 641 of the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast, where our sole mission is to make your anime addiction worse. And I am joined by a beautiful man. He's wearing a Dragon Ball shirt. He's very excited about the upcoming film. It's Mason. How are you, Mason? That's me. I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. Glad to be here today. It's uh, mildly not uncomfortable outside, so... Hopefully I don't sweat my brains out this episode, and I'm excited. I'm excited to be here and excited to talk about anime, because that's what we do. Ah. Intros are so hard, especially when you got to do them twice. And if you want to help out the podcast, guys, I think right now uh, the best way you could do that is to tell a friend, you know? Tell a friend about the podcast. Even if you can't go to aaapodcast.com slash join or whatever and support the show, you can tell a friend. You know, we can we can double our audience instantly. You and can if also you leave even a... don't have a friend. You could just scream at people on the street. Yeah, uh, honestly. Yep. Yeah. You could scream, that's, up, that's scream at people on the streets. You know, and you could go on iTunes or wherever you listen and uh, write a review. Whatever you can do to help out. Um, and uh, welcome to all of you watching live on Twitch. We are live on Twitch every uh, Sunday at on Twitch TV slash AAA Podcast. Live Sundays at 5 p.m. Eastern. And of course, if Caroline were here, she'd want you to know that uh, you can go to TikTok, Facebook, Discord. Twitter, all the places where you can get access to our show, um, and it's you know it's a lot of fun. The Discord, particularly, is is the best place to go if you want to be a member of our community. That's where the community hangs out. So, I'm loving this Twitch chat. They're saying slap bumper stickers on people's cars. You can reverse pickpocket people. You just give them like a printout of our URL. Just put it in their their bag. They get home. They're like, what the heck is this? Uh, go to your local library. Go to the computer lab. Make all the home pages default That's our right. website. AAA podcast. Like. You can do a lot more. You know, we expect a bit more of you guys. Come on, spread the message. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> no, listen, we're all sm- we're all small by ourselves, but but when all the anime addicts come together to into a group, we are fearsome. Yes, by group crime, about. we can overcome. That's right. <laughs> so uh, yeah, they're talking about bumper stickers on the Twitch. If we ever get that merchandise store, I was talking to somebody who can do art, so we'll see. Uh, we will have a, we'll, we'll we will make a bumper sticker for you. So. Guys, today on the podcast, we're going to talk about what we've been watching. Mason especially watches a lot of anime outside of the podcast, and so he's got lots of stuff to talk about. I got a few things, a couple of good ones, so we'll get to that. Maybe you guys will get some good recommendations. We are going to play Does Mitsuki's Mom Know today, so that's exciting. So we have somebody, I hope, is sitting around waiting, so they'll play Does Mitsuki's Mom Know, and if not, I will be sad. And we're also going to review the anime, The Genius Prince's Guide to Raising a Nation Out of Debt. Wow, that sounds like a light novel title. Or or Mitsugi's or, Guide to Driving His Co-Hosts Insane. That that would be mm. uh, that would also be, you know, a, a synonymous. Or title. Realist Hero 1.5, the non isekai edition. You know, goes by many names. And I am drinking gin today. Uh, I saw someone who was drinking gin and tonic. I got my gin. I got I'm drinking my gin, so uh, let's get the show started, Mason. You got anything else you want you need to add before 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 we get rolling? No, nah, let's send it. Send it, he says. Oh, 
Ben, it's time for big news of the week. Uh, yes, the Twitch chat, not gin and juice. No, it's gin and this um, Ultra Rosa Monster Energy. So I, th- I find that gin pretty much blends with anything. So it's a it's a good mixer. Anyway, uh, so just some interesting tidbit. There wasn't like a lot of news. Mason took the biggest news of the week, but he'll get to that in a minute. But I just thought it was fun that um, one of the most prominent players in the NBA, Zion Williamson, claims that about 80% of NBA players are into anime. And I don't know how this happens. Like maybe there's maybe it's just like a I don't know, an NBA team has usually less than 10 players. So that means that there's probably about 250 players in the NBA that are active. So that's a pretty small fraternity of players. And they, they they might talk, you know, it's like, oh, have you seen One Punch Man? Have you seen Demon Slayer? Have you seen Attack on Titan? And so, you know, he himself, uh, Williamson, is a big fan of Naruto. So he is part of the collaboration with Viz Media and the Jordan brand to promote Naruto-themed uh, sneakers and other apparel, which I think is pretty funny. And uh, he also attended Comic-Con uh, San Diego dressed as a Hokage in order to speak publicly about his appreciation for the series. He claims that uh, he also talked in a GQ interview similarly about how Naruto helped him bounce back from a serious injury and did how to deal with mental pressure, which I thought is kind of interesting. But I don't know. I just thought it was funny that like anime is becoming more mainstream and it seems like most of the entire NBA league is watching anime. So if you wanted to see a... Uh, if you wanted to have a sports league to follow and you're a big anime fan, maybe the knowledge that most of the players on TV playing anime are watching or playing basketball in the NBA are also watching anime on their free time is kind of neat. So I just thought I'd throw that out there as a tip. I haven't watched the NBA in quite a while. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe I'll give it a try here. I do have designs on like buying a house and having a hot tub and watching sports from the hot tub, like, you know, three nights a week. So kind of sounds, sounds pretty nice. Do you think there's more percentage-wise basketball players that watch anime or anime watchers that play basketball? Oh. Obviously not at the NBA mm-hmm. level, just... Well, he claims 80% of NBA players are into anime, so I would have to say that is a higher percentage because probably. probably 80% of the anime watchers don't play basketball. That would be pretty... It's probably less than 10%. Yeah. A little ambitious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you know, I also hear like a lot of NFL players are really into anime as well, and yeah, you see it pop up every now and then. The uh, I think the Chargers was it had like a whole like anime like promo for the new season. So they did, the, yeah, the new and... season of seventeen episode uh, main season. No, so yeah, I mean, you love to see it. Like you said, it's getting more and more mainstream every year, and you just you love to see it. Love to see it. There's been um like. In the in, in the NFL, there's a lot of like celebrations that happen when you score a touchdown, and so there have been people doing. People have been seen doing uh, the survey cores like salute when they score. One guy did like a like a whole Naruto hand like his the the stupid hand movement crap that they do when they're casting their spells or whatever. Good you thing know. Caroline but, isn't here. <laughs> yeah, she would. She would. Uh, she'd be like. She would be like. I'll correct you as I. Yeah, as exactly. She does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's a good thing Pancake's napping because she'd be like, she would bust in here in here with like her Narutard persona and be like, oh, excuse me, actually, it's, you gotta hold the pinky finger up while you do it. And yeah, it's ridiculous. Anyway, but Mason, your news is the biggest news of the week for sure. I thought so. I, I feel a little bad for grabbing it, but it oh, has yeah. been announced that One Punch Man will be getting a third anime season. The first season aired in 2015. The second one aired in 2019. So if this third season airs next year, it will be a, you know, an even four-year gap between each season. There has been no announcement so far on release date or even more crucially, which studio will be doing Mm. it. So I think that's going to be a bit of a kicker for me on how excited I feel about this. Obviously, notoriously, season one was off the charts hype and really yeah. good and beloved season two kind of dropped the ball new studio rush production it, yeah it wasn't that great so we'll see we'll see how season three goes obviously season three of mob psycho 100 the other work by the manga co one is coming out soon and that's done by bones that will be that's actually um has been all animated and completed ahead of airing which is kind of a rare feat for anime and one i think is 
probably going to be for the best. So hopefully One Punch Man takes a clue from its little brother and uh, gives the team the time to make it right. But it's a big name. It's a big property. So I'm excited at least a little bit. Did they say anything uh, about whether or not it would suck ass or not? <laughs> that, That's an important uh, that, that wasn't in the press release on if it was going to be terrible oh, in the waste of time. But what's your, what's your odds of slapping? What's the slap factor on this thing? You think... 50% chance it's good, 80% chance, 20%. Like, what do you, what do you ballpark? Well, slap factor. I'm going to give it a 50-50. You know, I think sometimes animes have bad second seasons. It's happened before. You know, Attack on Titan had kind of a down second season, for example. You know, there are other, <laughs> I thought Demon Slayer's second season was kind of a letdown. But then those other shows have also bounced back to be, you know, quite, quite uh, better later. And it, and and also, I would just say that it seems like they wouldn't want to green light another season if it was just going to suck again. It's like, why would you bother doubling down on making a second season, another season of shit? So I'm going to say 70-30, it's going to be good, is what I'm okay. going to say. Okay, I'll take uh, those odds. That's my final number. I just don't know. It's like, if they were like, oh, this... Like, oh, we're going to adapt this, but we know we're going to do a bad job of it. Or, oh, this section of the source material is no good. Why would they dump money into making another season? I just think that'd be foolish. Yeah. I'm hoping they learn from their mistakes and we get a good One Punch Man third season that, that we do de- that we do deserve, by the way. Yeah, so. I, I, I want this to succeed. I'm not like an anti One Punch Man fan. So let's yeah. uh, good luck, whoever is in charge of this and... Uh, let us know if you're excited for One Punch Man season three. Like I don't, I, like I don't suck One Punch Man's dick or anything, but like you know, but at the same time, I think there are a lot of fans of it, and I hate to see people just disappointed by things for no reason, really. So I don't want. It's just like when a big video game's coming out, and you wait, and you wait, and it gets delayed, and you wait, and you're be waiting a while, and then it's not any good, and then you're just disappointed. Like Cyberpunk, we don't want One Punch Man season three to be Cyberpunk, you know. So I'm hoping it's good. I think we deserve it. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So that's all I got. That is that is big news, though. That is that is big news of the week worthy right there, for sure. All right. Well, um, Mason and I watch a lot of stuff um, outside of the podcast. I tend to carouse, like, you know, older shows when I have time, which honestly is not very often. I'm pretty stretched thin, honestly. Um, I feel like even when I'm relaxing, I'm doing work. So... Uh, I don't have a, a whole huge list here to share with you, but Mason's got some good ones, and we're going to go through some of these shows that we've been watching recently and give our thoughts on them. And, you know, I hope that some of you that listen will write down these names and pick up, some, and, you know, maybe you'll find some anime that you, you know, want to watch. So, Mason, you have more than me, and honestly, I only have three written down, and, and it's kind of a stretch even at that, so why don't you get us started? Yeah, so I've got a couple here, and I think most, if not all of these mitts, you would absolutely love if you have not seen them. All so right. are there any on this list that you have seen? I've seen part of your first one that you have listed. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Well, let's, let's go with the one that if I could only talk about one today, and one that I would demand. Demand. That you watch, Mitsugi. Wow. It's this next one, which is Bebop High School googling you absolutely no questions asked have to watch this show mitts this is the most mitsuki show i have ever witnessed -uh. and you will absolutely love it i promise you that i stake my life on it bebop high school okay bebop high school it is not at all related or correlated or tied into cowboy bebop at all it's its own work it's a seven episode ova each episode is 50 minutes long, and it's from 1990. And this is the oh. ultimate delinquent anime. Nuh-uh. It is. It absolutely is. You got these two main characters. Wow, you got these two. Hmm? Seven 50-minute episodes. Yeah. But really, that's like, you know, that's like a 14-episode show. Yeah. yeah and right, honestly, yeah. the last episode is the only weak one, so you could cut that out, and it's like watching a regular anime. You know? Anyway, so we got these two uh, absolutely lovable goofballs who just go around getting into fights, chasing tail, just getting into all kinds of scraps with rival gangs, 
cursing, smoking, just being just being just lovable delinquents. And it's amazing. The animation is peak. The visuals are so interesting and engaging. And it's kind of episodic because each episode is them getting into some kind of tuffle with a rival gang that leads to this, that leads to this, and is usually resolved and packaged by the end of the episode. But it just feels so fresh. It feels like the cornerstone that every other delinquent anime tries to be. And it's just excellent. So the one caveat is that it's not streaming anywhere legally. So you yourself might have to get into the delinquent spirit to find it. And I will mention a word of warning that because it's fan-subbed, some of the language, as you would expect from a bunch of hard-nosed bad boys, is a little abrasive for some people. Oh, the language? They're, they're saying some some things, and the fan-subbers try to capture that, but being kind of an older-school anime, it doesn't age well. It's not a very PC anime in a lot of the, what they're saying. So oh, I'm not okay. going to recommend it for folks who might be a little more sensitive to that kind of no they're insulting people and they come off as insults and just giving people a heads up that said uh it starts off strong and it only gets way better from there so a couple episodes in is all you need to know but bebop high school mitts you gotta watch it my and, guy. And, and, where, and where is it where can you watch it um let's see if it's on youtube i want i want to see if it's on it retro is. crush it's not it's not anywhere legally Man, retro crush sucks fuck you you don't have um, anything I want. It looks like you can find it on YouTube. Oh, Just look up Bebop sake. High School. Um, All right. Well, now we'll, I'm sad. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a. You'll have to find. You'll have to find somewhere to find it, but it's worth the effort, Mitz, especially for you. I. You gotta right. believe. Watch a couple episodes. Report back. My guy. I my do guy. love. I do love that the that the image for it on my anime list has three pompadours. Oh, so many pompadours. Yeah, pompadours are fucking awesome. And this is done by Toei Animation back when they didn't suck ass. So Back before they sucked. Me. It's, yeah, it's good. It's good. This is bad. This is from back in like Dragon Ball era. You know, because Dragon Ball Z is actually so cool. pretty old. Dragon Ball Z is actually fucking old. People don't realize how mm -hmm. old and how enduring Dragon Ball is. But like Dragon Ball Z was made by Toei Animation. It came out in 1989. So Dragon Ball is 34 years old, and it's still going. <laughs> That's There aren't too many animes that can... And it never really had a break, really, either. So there's, there aren't too many animes that can literally say, I've been going strong for 34 years. So Toei Animation, I guess they did have a time and place when they didn't suck at making things, but yeah. that time isn't now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we gotta live in the past oh my god live in the past that's yeah sometimes it's not so bad okay um i'm gonna start i'll start off with the strongest one on my list here i watched castlevania season four recently i'm just gonna mm -hmm. go and punch this in here on on, on imdb because I, I don't think castlevania is really like it's really an anime but it sure as fuck feels like one uh, to be frank with you, um, anime wishes they could even sniff Castlevania's quality like nine out of ten times because it's just not even close. I mean, it's it's really a bummer. But these this Castlevania series, I've been talking about this on and off for a while now. It, it's been running for four years, and I'm telling you right now that this if you haven't watched this, this show yet off of Netflix, you're doing yourself an extreme disservice. I have friends that don't even watch anime like they wouldn't give it a shot they they don't care they, I, I could plead and pay them money they they'll they'll say they watched it and then lie to me and pocket the money like they won't do it but i have this friend and who who watched like the first episode of castlevania and ended up binging all of it and he's he's he, he's an anime non-believer right this series is so fucking good in, in so many different ways that it's it just makes me wish anime could, could have this quality on a consistent basis, but it just doesn't. Um, the Castlevania series is gorgeously animated. It's witty. The writing is super sharp. The action scenes are absolutely blistering. It's like nothing, and, and the quality never drops from the beginning to the very end of the show. It never dips in quality. Uh, some of the action scenes are just like, 
I don't even know like what to compare it to. Like Rock Lee versus Gara level, just like hardcore f- shit, you know. And uh, season four, you know, you people, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, once you get like deep into a season, sometimes the the quality really starts to drop. You're like, oh, they're just dragging it out. Like season seven of My Hero, like no one cares, you know. No, this show it just as strong as it ever was, and ends on a super strong note. And it's so fucking good that they're making another Castlevania. So the first Castlevania has Trevor Belmont in it, who's, who do I even compare him to? He's like Dante from Devil May Cry, level like badass plus utter smartass. Like he'll just like fuck you up and then like make you feel sad with like things he says to you. (laughs) You know, or, you know, or he just like, people will just be cursing at him and he's drunk and he just brushes it off. It's just like an unbelievably lovable character. And now they're, now they're going to, release another Castlevania because this one was so successful and it's going to have I think Richter Belmont in it for who who is you know from from like old school Castlevania games people got to check this shit out um season four was just as good as anything I've seen I'm being very vague without giving any spoilers you know the whole motif of Dracula is over like all of the series and this is probably one of the most like insanely OP incarnations of Dracula that you're going to see. Like Dracula is so powerful in this series that it's just shocking. You know, it's not at all like what you see on like old, like in like movies, he he will fuck you up and it's just super good. So I don't know. I can't say enough. I mean, it's got a, it's got an an eight point. What is this? Like an 8.3 on IMDb, which has got to put it like, you know, in the top 100 TV series on, that have been on television probably at this point. So go check it out. Yeah, Captain Avatar's like, I should probably get around to watching Castlevania. Yeah, probably, because there hasn't been an anime as good as Castlevania in like 10 years. So, yeah. I mean, I'm just going to throw that out there. Like, it's just a fact. It's it's not, it's sort of not close. So when you compare, like, what we're, what we're, what we're going to review today to get this Castlevania show, it's like, ugh, it's like watching a yeah. bunch of... It's like watching a bunch of middle schoolers like make an art project and then watching like, you know, a fucking studio full of professionals. You know, it's there's more animation in 10 minutes and like there's more animation in 10 minutes of Castlevania than there was in four hours of Genius Prince. <laughs> so, so, yeah, probably should go watch it. But that's enough, um, you know, uh, fellatio of, of Castlevania. Let's get back to Mason. Okay, let's uh, keep it going. This next one is one that Mitz has seen a little bit of, and I don't think I'd recommend it to him, so he can tune out here. But this is Magical Shopping Arcade Abenobashi. This is a 2002 series by the notorious studio Gainax. Uh, It's 13 episodes long, and you can find it on High Dive. And it is a bit of a strange show. It follows... Two characters, Sashi and his friend Arumi, who have grown up in a shopping arcade in Osaka. And a shopping arcade is not a place to buy arcade games or anything like that. It's these long, covered walkways, these streets that are kind of like commercial hubs. They have a bunch of shops of restaurants and small retailers and big name stuff. It's kind of just a place to go and get everything you could possibly need. And... They live on this street, and they grew up there, but it's kind of falling out of fashion. It's going to be torn down soon, and they're just kind of lamenting the fact that their childhood life is going to be uprooted and torn away, and they're going to grow apart. All that, you know, growing up melodrama stuff. And essentially, uh, an event happens that triggers them to be transported to an alternate world version of their shopping arcade. All the people they know and love are there but it might be a dinosaur land and they have to figure out how to survive and they try to get back to the world and they should go show and they go to like a, a medieval palace land or a robot land or a future land essentially it's like an episodic isekai where each episode has the two of them bopping off to some alternate version of the universe and they have to find their way back home and it gets a little old because it is very repetitive but it is kind of buoyed by the fact that uh Gynax is just off the wall crazy there are so many references to their future and past shows if you want to see like 
the seedling of what would become like Gurren Lagann, for example, like you can find those fingerprints all over this show. And it's really interesting to see just how the studio, which is so off the wall and bonkers, kind of wraps their head around what an isekai can be. And it's definitely a more engaging version than we get nowadays. Uh, it has a very questionable ending. It's very divisive, but that's kind of just how Gynex does things, right? When you think they're going to make a big statement that you saw coming, they just love subverting things. And that's kind of how this show goes, because after six episodes of the same episodic, episodic, get out, get out, get out, find a new place, it goes into this whole like weird backstory on why all of this is happening, and it's kind of engaging. So a very mild recommendation, more so for fans of Gynax, of that western infused style, and just who are like to see weird subversions on tropes. So Magical Shopping Arcade Abenoshi, or Aben Abenobashi, uh, is interesting in concept. I wouldn't recommend it to everyone, though. I've seen some of this. It's just, I think for me, it was a little too silly. Or maybe, or maybe I wasn't in the mood for it at that time. It's a very, it's very comedically based. And it's kind of very samey, samey after a while. So I don't think it would be your cup of tea. Yeah, according to my anime list, I've actually seen this, but I don't really remember much of it. But I didn't that's, give it a good, I didn't that's give it a fair. good score. So. You don't strike me as a, a guy next fan. Anyway, <sighs> no. I mean, I think didn't we're the just very loud. Did didn't the trigger people come from Gynax? Yes, they did. Yeah, and I just dis dislike trigger, so yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. I do like I do I do like Evangelion. There you go. Can't hate everything Gynax has done. That would be a little broad sweeping. Um, I mean, yeah, they're they're important, but at least they used to be. Um, next up, I think I talked about this before. Um, City Hunter. I have some. Uh, I, God, I want to like City Hunter so much. I just, I, but I just, I don't know. I just don't like it yet. Um, my problem with City Hunter is I've seen, <laughs> I've watched the opening theme like 140 times. And then within two minutes of watching an episode, I fall asleep. That's pretty much how it goes with me. It has a great theme song. This is, there's no doubt about that. Uh, it does have a great, and, and a great opening video as well. And it has, like, such classic 80s feel. You know, City Hunter is this anime about, like, this guy named, uh, na uh, his name's uh, Ryo, I think. And um, it's just, like, this super classic show that has a million fucking episodes and a ton of OVAs and a bunch of movies. And it's just, like, there's just, like, endless amounts of it. And, and, it, and it's, I, I want to love it so much. But I haven't, you know, I haven't run into the point of the series yet where I assume that they're going to run into, that I'm going to run into some kind of a, um, like a, a, a story thread that's going to carry me through episode to episode. And the reason, and the, and the, because City Hunter is very much like this guy named, named Ryo who's super cool and like mad perverted, like in the like, in most insane way possible. But Sinny so takes like these odd jobs or whatever. He's like a hitman or he's a, a driver or he's just, you know, he, he'll do anything for money. You know, he's like one of those like guys that's, he's like a mercenary, but he's not a bad guy, sort of. And, but it's so episodic and it's so lengthy. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to see how many episodes this beast is, but it's fucking long. I know it's long. Uh, man, the City Hunter 99. Is there, what is, how, City Hunter. Where's the original City Hunter on here? City Hunter, 1987. Um, 51 episodes, and then there's like three more series. I'm, I'm going to say City Hunter's got to be at least 100 episodes long. And it's just a little long to have to be episodic. I mean, that's pretty rough. I I, I don't know. I, I can barely get through 10 episodic episodes of anime because I just find them unbelievably boring. But, and, and I find the writing to be cheap and shitty too. It's like, how much can you really do with 20 minutes unless you're a master writer? Uh, but City Hunter, it just doesn't, it hasn't hit that point yet, but I know I'm supposed to like this anime. It has great, great reviews online. It's a total classic uh, anime. It's very enduring. It's got, 
multiple series, multiple movies, OVAs, everything, super well known, but I just haven't found the way, like the the ability to just fall in love with it yet. And I'm really trying because I feel like there's something here that I'm missing. And uh, so I don't know. I'm, I'm going to try, I'm going to give City Hunter maybe another 10 episodes and hope that I can find, uh, you know, something that will keep me watching it episode to episode. It's the same reason, this is the same reason why I stopped watching Dragon Ball GT because I felt like I was just watching filler when episodes of anime are so episodic, they just feel like filler to me. And it's like, oh, well, you don't really have a story. It's just, you know, oh, some lady shows up and her fucking husband's kidnapped or something. And then you know, 10 minutes later, you find the husband and you move on. It just feels like filler to me. <clears throat> and that's a big Does issue. Does it feel like Kimiguri Orange Road a bit? Yeah, it's, it's well, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a little like that. Except I'd say this even has less of a, of, of a continuing story. Like, at least Kimiguri Orange Road has, like... Uh, the emotions the that. emotions of the characters at least seem to carry over through the show like the look like the blonde girl who i can't remember her name who by the way the main character should just go with her because he's never getting the main girl uh, she's a little real trash character though she shows up in a trash can multiple times <laughs> yeah i mean kimo gude is is a, is a is an okay show i mean we we made it about man it's long though we made it about 25 episodes into that and then we dropped it uh, yeah, I made it all the way through Kimaguri, and I don't recommend doing that. But I made it only like two episodes through City Hunter before I was like, I get it. I get everything that this yeah. show is going to do. Yeah, I don't need to waste my time. And and Rio is one of these characters that is, he's just he's even more perverted than like Master Roshi. I mean, it's it's intense. I mean, except he has. Master Roshi's sitting on an island, and it's like he's not really around anybody. So he his his level of like insultingness is can only go so far. It's like pretty much the only women he sees is like Bulma, but Rio is like constantly, like pretty much harassing these women, and it's just kind of like I don't know, kind of tired a little bit. And I I do find the I I have learned the term mokuri pretty well at this point, which is basically the gitaigo that means the sound or the, or the, what, like your, the, the act of your penis becoming erect is what mokuri means. And it's like, oh, he sees like a girl's breast and he'll go like, oh, mokuri, and he'll go to like grab her boobs. And I guess that means he has like an erection all of a sudden. But like, that's, that's a pretty strong detraction from, yeah. you know, this like serious, almost like, uh, you know, hitman type character that should be just like fucking shit up. Like I, I don't think you're gonna see a Golgo thirteen mokuding his way through like Tokyo, <laughs> or wherever he is. Um, so I really, well, I'm really gonna, I'm gonna st- stick with it a little bit. It does have a banging op. Like there's no doubt about it. Uh, oh, that's the best part about the show. It's in the two episodes I watched of it. <laughs> I and I love how he'll. I love the segment of the op where he's running and they have like the city hunter like words splashing behind him. Like it looks so yeah. good. Um. And it just has like this super epic '80s feel that just reminds me of like old school Bubblegum Crisis, which is just peak, uh, honestly. But City Hunter just hasn't grabbed me yet, and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep watching a little more. But if it doesn't get like a super, uh, if it doesn't develop something, I'm gonna have to drop it permanently. Um, I tried to drop Retro Crush permanently because I was because like we're I'm like we're saving for a house now, and I'm trying to like. I'm trying to save like a lot of money in the next two years and and I'm like cutting everything that's not needed. And it was like, Oh, the five bucks a month over two years is 120 bucks. And that gets you a little bit. And it's like, but then like the abuse that, that retro crush puts you through when you don't pay for it is just vicious. Like, I don't see how anybody can watch it without the paying for it. It's so brutal. You're watching more commercials, more airtime where the commercials than the fucking anime. So it's just too much. So I tried to drop Retro Crush too, but I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't do it. It wouldn't let me. I did drop Peacock. Hey, that's that's for the best. I'm down to Peacock. I, I'm down to Retro Crush, uh, Netflix, and, uh, and and Verve, and that's it. So I'm doing okay. Uh, Mason, you got a lot more stuff here. What, what's next on your list? I've got. Two old school OVAs, both Ooh. of which should be on Retro Crush. Oh, I'm gonna look. Neither of them, neither of them are though. So, oh, Mason, 
I'm sorry. I oh I, I found all these cool old OVAs, God and I'm it. like, oh, this will definitely be on Retro Crush, and I'll definitely recommend them to you. But then they they're not there. They're not there. They just don't have them. They're not. Retro you know, Crush. Retro Get Crush has OVAs. like it has like some really great OVAs, and then a, and then like and then they're missing like a billion of them that are awesome that they need to have. I don't know what the yeah. fuck's going on. And these are both ones that people should definitely check out if you like. But we'll, we'll just start with one of them, and then we'll do the other one later. So the first right. one I want to talk about is the older one, which is from 1991. It's called Doomed Megalop- Megalopolis. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Megalopolis. Doomed Megalopolis. Uh, this is done by Studio Madhouse, and this is very much an aesthetic first anime. This is so supernatural and dark and cool. This is like a good both of the ones I'm about to recommend are like good Halloween watches. Halloween. This is based, yeah. We're getting a little early here, but I got to talk All about it. All right. Them. So this is based this is an adaptation of the historical fantasy novel Taito Monogatari. Um and it's just so dark and violent and sexual. It's so cool. Sexual. So it essentially it is very inspired. Have you ever seen a uh, Urosuki Doji? You know, Legend of the Overfiend, yeah, the classic. Some, yeah. a while, this a is long, very, a very similar wheelhouse. And it essentially covers the first third of the novel where all these like massive earthquakes and like environmental disasters that really happened in Tokyo are not from some just chance occurrence, but from the, this demonic entity that has like kind of cursed Tokyo by inflicting all these like horrors upon it and there's this cartoonishly great villain named kato who is just like persists and for centuries like attacks these group of people that are trying to defend tokyo and it's just so visually interesting the plot all the all the dialogue is very passable like it's very just bland and you're just like okay it's there to set the scene for these just like cool like, this is a good late night 2 a.m. watch when you're a little out of it and you just want to see some cool <laughs> animation. You want to see some weird penis monsters grow like thorns and attack people. Oh, with yeah. Like razor sharp I things. Fucking love like, penis monsters. Like, this is one of those uh, anime that they're like, hey, don't forget, we need to throw a pair of boobs and dicks in there just to make it seem more adult and edgy. But it works oh, and it's cool. So and it's just, it's just a fun terrible demonic time it's very cheesy very campy but it leans into it there's a kind of terrible dub for it that they just really leaned into oh and yeah it's not as good as the abenobashi dub where they throw these like crazy southern accents on but is it Doom as good Megalopolis, as the Golden Boy dub? it's no no but it's not like trying to be oh, funny because okay. golden boy is a funny show and they know it's funny so they lean into yeah. having funny voices this yeah. is a show that I think is trying to be serious and they kind of just phone in these performances, but it just fits this like old retro vibe of the whole thing. So I recommend it to very few people, but if you know that you are into this aesthetic of this early nineties, just like cartoonishly evil demonic spirits where occasional pair of tits will come flying at you. Yes. Check, check out the Megalopolis. It's four episodes. Each are 50 minutes long once again. And, uh, I watched like one a month over these past couple months, and I finally completed but it. But where did you watch it? On the internet. Oh my god, bro! Why am I paying for these services? They don't carry anything. I don't know. This is like I was like, oh, this god is definitely gonna be on Retro Crush. Nope, it's not. I'm getting a fucking call from River Fall, from Fall River, uh, Massachusetts. Should I just patch them into the podcast and see what the fuck they want? I easily uh, could. No. You can probably find this on YouTube once again. Uh, the cool thing, though, is that there's a live action of this, and they got the live action actors and actresses to be the voices in the anime counterpart. So the the, the original audio is actually pretty intense and uh, well done. So check it out, Doom Megalopolis. You know if it's for you. I, I hung up on them, but, you know, honestly... I just wonder why I'm paying this money every month to watch shit when I when I can't watch any of the stuff that I want to watch. Makes me I so know. sad. I know. They're calling me I'm back. Sorry. They they're calling me back. 
<laughs> these motherfuckers want to be on the podcast so bad. It's official now. I'm d- dialing them in here. Let's see what they want. Oh, let's see what happens. Hello? Hello? Hey, you're on the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast right now. How are you doing? <laughs> okay, I guess. Um, I don't know what this is. What am I calling? You're, you're, you're live on the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast right now. Have you ever seen anime before? No, and I don't want to see it again until it, it's showing up on my um, bank account information. Oh, man. That's not good. You should cancel that. Yeah, no kidding. Um, but I don't understand how you even... All right, hung up on that lady. <laughs> you got him. I think that the fucking... I, I think that someone's uh, someone stole their mom's credit card and tried to buy some hentai episodes off the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast. This lady's definitely going to call me back. <laughs> As I hung up on her ass. She tried to call me... Uh, she tried to call me before, like, like months ago, and I was like, I told her, I was like, go on PayPal and cancel your shit. <laughs> no, someone was listening at the beginning of this episode. We said, hey, get people involved. What better than stealing your parents' credit card, subscribing them to the podcast? Three new fans right there. I don't know what this person wants. I don't know. I tried looking up their info before to see if I could find them and cancel it for them, and I couldn't find their name either. So I don't know. I don't know who they are or what they want, but <sighs> oh boy. Just more people that don't believe in anime. It's big mistakes. Hey, as long as they're paying for it, we don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably not using what they pay for. Call your bank, people. Um, so the, the only thing, I, the only other thing I have that I've been watching, and I do apologize. Like I feel like I haven't watched a lot of stuff uh, lately, but um, is just more initial D. We're almost done with stage four. It's I'm not going to hey, talk for nice. long on this. One minute. It's it is really good still. Uh, you know, all this is just leading up to the new series that comes out next year that I know we'll be covering, but, um, you know, initial D just gets better. It gets, unlike a lot of shows that kind of have a good section and then like they kind of peter off initial D just kind of like escalates and gets better and better as it goes on. Um, I never really feel like it hits like a lull anywhere. And, uh, it's, it's definitely still our go-to late at night when we, you know, want to watch an anime and we don't know what else to watch we put on initial d and but we are running out of episodes so initial d gives you a good run though it's close to 70 episodes so but um if you like if you like cars if you like sports anime if you like racing check out initial d it is it is high quality stuff so mason why don't you pick one more good one for us here yeah i'll uh do my final ova another very similar to uh dune megalopolis this is demon prince enma this is a Go Nagai work. Oh. So the guy who did like Devil Man and a bunch of other classics. This one this might be a... on Retro Crush. Uh, it's not. It's oh, not. come on. It's not. I'm Mason. sorry. It just, I wanted to watch a bunch of old OVAs and I watched a bunch of old OVAs and none of them were on Retro Crush. I feel so sue sad. Me. I'm sorry. I tried. I tried to find stuff on Retro Crush, but I'd seen it all. I'm not going to sue you. I mean, you Good. deserve that. Good. Uh, but this is uh, from 2006, a little more recent, and it follows Enma, who's this demon prince of the underworld. He's the fire boy, and he gets sent to Earth, and he's, his mission is to track down demons that got loose, destroy them, and kind of keep our world safe of the hell spawn that has invaded us. So it's fire boy, his partner, Princess Yukihime, who has ice fire powers, boy. and uh, they're like kappa underling who's just this like danny devito character that goes around getting the scoop <laughs> on people macking on prostitutes you know how it is what and they set up their like detective agency and each episode is them going out into the city tracking down these uh demonic spirits these monsters and vanquishing them to protect us mere mortals and did you say macking on prostitutes I said macking on prostitutes. But that's cool. like the, it's, but, it's, it's it's like hostesses, you know. Like uh, he goes but, to those uh, things. That's such like weak um, shit, though, because like you don't have to mack on a fucking prostitute. They're paid to be macked on. What that does? It, when you when you're a fucking big turtle boy, what are you supposed to do? I don't know. <laughs> um, a turtle? Uh, what? Yeah. Oh yeah, because he's, he's a demon. A kappa. I well, don't he's know. A he's, he's a got demon. The shell and everything. He's a kappa. M- make yourself look like fucking Elvis Presley and go bang some fun hookers. I don't know. He's, he's trying his best. Anyway, go, go uh, three dicks and take three take on three chicks at once. I don't know. <laughs> what do you want me to do? He's a demon. Grow three dicks, take on three chicks. That's yeah. Do that's it. That's the last man. motto if I ever heard one. 
anyway, um, it's a pretty good horror anime. It's not amazing. It has some, like, early 2000s level CG that is kind of haunting in a weird way because it is so, like, clearly car- bad in its CG use, but just <laughs> well done enough where you're like, I see where they're going with it. They had some... It almost makes it more, like, unearthly and mysterious. Um, it's done by Brains Base, and it's, once again, Brains for the Base. Halloween season coming up, mm. I would recommend it. It's pretty dark and savage at times. It's pretty mature. Uh, the last episode, like, really has some twists along the way and has some, like, messed up things being shown. And it's going to guy. Like, if you've seen his stuff, you know what you're getting into. Just that weird kind of horror that just hits a little different. And it's a fun ride. Four episodes, 40 minutes each. Another long one that you watch, like, one episode a day. Maybe watch one episode each Friday night in Halloween. You'll have a good time. There's some nudity. There's some gore. There's vampires. The classics are there, but titties. it's uh, you got some titties, my dude. Like, of course you're gonna have. It's an OVA, of course. But uh, I love Demon OVAs. And my, it's it's another fun OVA. I, obviously, best one of these is Bebop High School. My man, you still have to check that out. But I this, know. uh, it's pretty good. Dude has a weird like talking hat thing. It's it's fun. It's fun. I it's think OVAs are my are like maybe my favorite format. Cause they're good. They get in, they get out, they give you their best ideas. They don't dwell too long. They don't waste your time. They usually have better animation. Yep. Yeah, it's, and that's that, that's fun. So, that's so big. Like having just better animation is such a big thing. You yeah. Know? It's just it, it really does matter. I mean, and the length is is great. Like you, you know, and I will say unless it's an OVA of like a TV series, because then you're lost, you know, or it's just like a recap. But. You know, these, like, four-episode OVAs, like, you know, if you wanted to go watch, you know, like, like Electromagnetic Girlfriend or something, like one of these. Yeah. it's They're fucking awesome. I love it. Or, like, uh, or um, Read or Die, the OVA, is so fucking good. Um, yeah, I and mean, it's this one's so great because it doesn't waste your time. Like, it doesn't even have a long introduction of, like, this is the Demon Prince Enma. This is his mission. Here's his backstory. Here's how he met. Like, it just goes it just jumps into it and trust the viewer can be like okay they're a team i see what they're going like you put together the pieces as you watch it and it works and it's pretty well done so all these ovas i had a blast with they're not all good but they're all way different than what you're getting in anime nowadays and i needed this refresher well, Mason, I don't have anything else. Um, you didn't watch the new Dr. Stone? Uh, no, I fucking no! I keep forgetting. That's probably like on Crunchyroll too, which is it so is. funny. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I will get around to it. Although tonight Pancake wants to watch the premiere of the new Go- Game of Thrones season. So I don't know why I'm bothering. But I don't I, I don't even know the who's in it. Oh, the House of the Dragon. That thing? Is that what it is? That, House of the Dragon? Is that tonight? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what it's. I think Jon Snow's in it. I don't. Know. I gotta look. I'm sorry up. for recommending all these shows that don't have the best legal options, but this is what I watched, and uh, I don't. I don't condone any behavior that you don't feel comfortable with, but is what it is. What are you talking about? Nothing. Nothing. Oh. Nothing at all. All right. So we're we going to the news break then. I think we should. You heard the man. All right. Well, in honor of our anime that we're going to be covering today on the podcast, we have a question that is uh, themed thusly. So, which of the following kingdoms is not featured in the anime Genius Prince? Uh, There is a a world map, and they like to show it often in this anime. Uh, the, the kingdoms are Natra, Soljest, Delunio, and or Elfriden. One of these is not from the Genius Prince, and you got to figure out which one. Natra, Soljest, Delunio, or Elfriden. And we'll be back after the news break. We've got we've got does Mitsuki's mom know? We've got mailbags, and, uh, and and we have the review of Genius Prince. So stick around, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Anime 
Anime Addicts, Mitsugi's here, bringing you your sweet anime crack. It's time for the news. Getting us started off with Skate the Infinity, an anime that started off with promise and ended like a little bitch. Is getting an anime second season and a new OVA, believe it or not. Yes, indeed. This was announced this past week at the Okinawa, at the Okinawa Palette Civic Theater. Hiroko Utsumi of Banana Fish is returning to direct both of these animes at Studio Bones. And uh, the series composition and character designs are also being done by the same staff that did the original season, so look out for that. Skate the Infinity aired 12 episodes. Um, what was it? Winter of 2021. So if you are a fan of this anime, if you enjoyed it, there's a second season coming out. Most of the staff is the same, including the studio, so I'm sure you can expect more of the same. Next up, it looks like the Crunchyroll Awards are going to be moving to Japan. A representative from Sony Music announced on Thursday that the seventh annual Crunchyroll Awards will take place in Japan for the first time, as, of course, Sony does now own Crunchyroll, so it does kind of make sense that they put it in Japan, I guess. The ceremony is going to include guests from production studios, creators, voice actors involved in various anime series, and so much more. So now that Sony's here to stay, I guess, uh, they're going to be able to throw more weight at the Crunchy Rewards, and maybe you'll get a little more uh, industry sponsorship and a little less cringe with your anime uh, (laughs) Crunchy Awards. Next up, some sad news for the people that are big fans of Hunter x Hunter. It just doesn't sound like Hunter x Hunter is going to be getting any more content anytime soon. In May, the Hunter x Hunter creator uh, Yoshihiro Togashi opened up on Twitter about his daily progress on the Hunter x Hunter manga, but his recent tweets have been pretty worrying as he has essentially stated that, quote, his symptoms are not improving and my treatment and recovery have been taking up a large amount of my time. And he uh, also wrote that, quote, I've done one frame. I can't put strength into my hand, into my right hand and I'm in pain. So that sounds pretty sad. I don't know what his condition is, but it certainly doesn't sound like you're going to be getting any more Hunter x Hunter anytime soon. The manga has been on hiatus since September of 2018, and it returned from a previous hiatus in September of 2018, so only two months prior to that. So it's hiatus x hiatus, and and it sounds like it's going to continue uh, to be the case, unfortunately. Next up and lastly in the news, rounding us out, a new anime is coming out, the light novel Yes, yes, Isekai, here we go. Isekai de cheat skill o te ni shita ore wa genjitsu sekai o mo, mo so suru. Or, I got a cheat skill in another world and became unrivaled in the real world too. <laughs> How many? Every single possible iteration of any type of like, overpowered skill type thing is going to be put into the Isekai eventually. Uh, this has got, got some talk online though, however. Miku began writing this fantasy adventure novel on the Kakuyomu website in March of 2017, and three years and three months later, uh, after launching the Shika no Mi, the Fruit of Evolution. So if you're a fan of Isekai, this one is going to be coming out here before too long. The synopsis, a chance to come back, a mysterious door stands open, inviting a boy who has been brutally bullied all his life to take a courageous step forward into the unknown. And on the other side, he finds a horde of priceless artifacts and a world as filled with magic as it is with monsters, with the most shocking revelation, however, is that he can bring whatever he wants back with him when he returns to Earth. It won't be long before this double life changes him forever. Well, sounds like it's spirited away, sort of. Uh, so look out for this one coming out here, probably, I'd say, in the next 12 months. This was Mitsugi, and this was your anime news break. Now, time to get back to the podcast. When it comes to Pokemon, don't mess with Kazuo. I was in sixth grade, and I had Pokemon on my Game Boy. I had a Game Boy Pocket, I think, at the time. I was in gym class, and we were in the locker room, and I'm getting changed. This kid runs by, grabs my Game Boy, and bolts. (gasps) And so I never got it back. Kid stole my Game Boy with my Pokemon in it. So in sixth grade, uh, one of my electives, I was a teacher's assistant. This kid had that teacher. So I basically went, allegedly went into the computer and wrecked all of his grades <gasps> yes. and oh found his locker combination because the teacher keeps a record of all that broke into his allegedly broke into his <laughs> locker stole all of his pokemon cards which he had a ton of and took all of his textbooks and threw them away i think he assumed it was me we did end up getting to, into a fight later on <laughs> And and he beat his ass. Yeah, yeah, I got into a lot of fights in school. He beat that kid's ass, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, used definitely. To fighting. Back to the show.
Welcome back to the podcast. We had a trivia question. Which of the following kingdoms is not a uh, is not featured in the anime The Genius Prince? In the anime, uh, the the options were Natra, Soljest, Delunia, or Alfreden. And um, if you've been paying attention, the Alfreden is not is actually a, the main kingdom from Realist Hero. So, ooh, Mason liked that. He's tapping his head. He's like, ooh, he trickster. trickster. Big brain mode. Yeah, big brain mode right there. So yeah, and uh, Natra is the main kingdom from Genius Prince. And uh, guys, when you support the podcast, I just want to let you know, again, it's aaapodcast.com slash join over at Patreon. A lot of people are using Patreon these days, and, and we don't mind that. Uh, you do get access to our exclusive members-only RSS feed. So um, there is an RSS feed that you can a- access th- through pretty much any mobile app that plays podcasts. I know a lot of you have your own that you prefer, and most of these are supported. But you can get that feed and tap right into hundreds and literally hundreds and hundreds of bonus episodes that you haven't heard before. There's like this whole catalog behind the paywall of probably close to a thousand episodes at this point that you get access to for a measly seven dollars. Um, if you help out the podcast, you get all that via that uh, exclusive RSS feed. So help out the podcast, and and we help you out. You'll never run out of content. Um, I see we have our a friend to play it as Misaki's mom. No. Uh, waiting yeah. in the wings, um, and I guess that means that they're ready to play. And I'm very excited because we haven't played this in about a, in a month or so. So, um, shall we uh, bring them in? Yeah, let me know when uh, we're ready. Just give me a minute because I'm going to have to fix this audio on this other channel as well. Okay, should I bring them in? No, give me 30 seconds. <laughs> Realist hero, genius prince. What's the difference? It's all the same thing. I love this sec- segment so much. It's 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 one of my favorites. I hope I hope you and your mom both appreciate that because I certainly do. Mm-hmm. Did you say something for me. Uh, words oh, you out bring, loud. You can bring them in now. Let's do it. It's time for Does Mitsugi's Mom Know? The game show that pits Mitsugi's unassuming mother against anime's most basic questions. Now here are your hosts, the Anime Addicts! Whoa! It's time for Does Mitsugi's Mom Know? The game show where my mother, she... She knows some things about anime, but she's not always uh, knowledgeable about things that most people should know. And uh, this is the game where you try to guess whether or not she knows the answers. And we have Floating Eyeball, which is a fantastic name with us on the phone. Floating Eyeball, how are you? And where are you calling from? Uh, I'm doing good, and I'm calling out of Utah. Ooh, Utah. I had visited Utah not, not long ago, actually. Yes, it's... Doing pretty good this year. We had a bad summer last year, but not as many fires. So, good, good skies. Well, what part of Utah are you located in? Uh, so I'm in Layton. So I'm right in between Ogden and Salt Lake. Salt Lake will be a better name for most people. So just north of Salt Lake, about 20 minutes. Uh, Pancake and I did visit Salt Lake City um, earlier this year, and ha- had an interesting time, I'll say. So. Well, I'm happy to have you on on the show, um, Mitsugi's mom. No, I'm sure you don't need to, to be explained all the rules, but I have five questions for you. They're pretty easy, but my mother, she'll like know the answers to just the randomest shit, and then like the easiest questions, she just won't know. So they really are coin flips. But your duty today is to figure out if you uh, whether or not she knows the answers, and if you can get three out of five right, we're gonna give you a fantastic prize. And I'm gonna sit here and drink gin while you struggle. How does that sound? It sound sounds good. And, uh, I have some seltzer water, so I'll join you in drinking. Okay, sounds good. And we um, love the water game. Yeah, that made Mason really happy. Mason just got <laughs> Mason just got his own mokuri just now because uh, because of your water. So, um, all right. Well, uh, I'm excited to have you. Thanks for contributing to our podcast. Uh, are you ready? 
I am. Are you ready for does Mitsuki's mom know? I'm ready. I am. Oh, you're both ready. Look at that. <laughs> Mason's losing it right now. Okay. All right, here comes question one. My neighbor Totoro has lots of fun animals and critters. How many sizes do Totoro come in? This is like your obligatory Totoro question. The answer is three. There's three sizes of Totoros. Um, I've act- so I've actually never seen this movie. It's one of the many, many I have not seen. Um, I'm going to go with three since you told me three. Yes, but does my mother know that? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I, w- I would imagine she does. All right. Should I lock you in? She knows it. It's three. Yes. Here we go. (laughs) My neighbor Totoro has lots of fun animals and critters. How many sizes do Totoro come in? I know there's one huge one, and then there are some little ones, but I don't know if they're really Totoros or not. Um, I'll have to say four. The answer is three. Man. (sighs) <sighs> it's a rough start on, on does Mitsuki's mom know. There's the Chibi Totoro, which is the little white ones. There's the Chu Totoro, which actually means medium Totoro. So if you go to uh, like a restaurant and you add, and you get and you ask for like Chu Mori, it'll give you like I think like the medium. And then there's the main Totoro, that's the big one that we all know. But hey, floating eyeball, don't be discouraged. You, you, I mean, you, you, how could you be sad? You're literally a floating eyeball. I mean. Honestly, it's like the most awesome thing. And and you're going to get the second question right. So are you ready for it? I am. Dragon Ball Z has a race of people called Namekians. Piccolo is a Namekian. What color skin does Piccolo have? It's pretty simple. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she knows this one. I, I, I've heard you ask enough Dragon Ball questions to know that she knows this one. Oh, man. Maybe that means I need to stop asking Dragon Ball questions. <laughs> Do you think she would have... Well, I guess I don't want to speak too soon. Do you think she would have gotten it if he didn't clarify that Piccolo was a Namekian and just asked what color skin do Namekians and Dragon Ball have? Yeah. That'd be trickier. That'd be trickier. Yeah, yeah that, that one I don't think so, but but I think she would have seen enough. Because she, if I, as I remember, uh, Raditz was her favorite. Uh, wow. Uh, so I think I think she knows enough about Dragon Ball to know Piccolo's a Namekian, who Piccolo is, and that he is green. I think you know a lot about Mitsugi's mom. I've been listening for years. <laughs> Studied wow. the tapes. <laughs> well, you would think that she'd know all the Totoros, too, because she's seen My Neighbor Totoro like 73 times, but uh, she didn't know that. So let's find out. Here we go. Dragon Ball Z has a race of people called Namekians. Piccolo is a Namekian. What color skin does Piccolo have? Green. Green, that's right. <laughs> she was go. so quick to answer that. The children, they're screaming. They're wild. They're, 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 they're going crazy. So you made them very happy. Are you, uh, but I don't want to delay. I want to keep it rolling. Do you want your third question? Yes, please. Isekai anime are very popular these days. But what does isekai mean? Hmm. Ooh, this one I don't, I don't think she'll know this one. We have no phone a friend for you, I, I regret to say. Yeah, that's that's I feel like Isekai's too new not new of a genre, but too new in its popularity for her to know, and I I don't know how much talking uh you do with her. So I don't think she knows this one. Alright, should I lock you in on that? Yes, please. So polite. Isekai anime are very popular these days. But what does Isekai mean? Hmm. Isekai it's a very old expression, meaning part animal, part human. Mason's dying. Oh, my God. Oh, the children, settle the <laughs> fuck down. Oh, my God. Someone throw them some lollipops. All I right. Oh, my how God. how sagely she sounded. Ah, yes. Isekai. <laughs> as, as has been passed down in the tomes of my forefathers. It's <laughs> long meant the... <laughs> Well, I love it. Mason, he's ahead on the pitch count now. I know. I know. So fantastic. Don't let it don't let it get to your head, my dude, or your That's eyeball, true. whichever. Yeah. Do, I don't know how don't, it all connects. Don't <laughs> Other people have failed in this exact spot. Are you ready for the clinching the potentially quench, clinching question? I am. Let's go. In the anime Hunter x Hunter, who is Killua's best friend? 
So, Golm, the main character, is Killua's best friend. It's pretty much about them. I'm gonna say yes, but I don't know if she's seen the show or watched it with you. I'm gonna say yes on this one. All right. Should I lock you in that she knows that Killua and Golm are best friends? Yeah. Yes. Yes, please. Oh boy, here we go. In the in the anime Hunter x Hunter, who is Killua's best friend? Best friend was a uh, white wolf. Oh no. That is not even close. What the hell? What was she thinking? White wolf. <laughs> I was expecting her to be like Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> she could have been. Oh my god. Which is yeah. a different kind of wolf, I guess, or fox, but mm. I don't even, I don't even know if there's a white wolf in Hunter Hunter. There's like the big dog. <laughs> All I right. Well, as it often it, as it often is, we're coming down to the last question. It's do or die. No questions. No regrets. You're doing fine. So you're well past the point of embarrassment. So you have that. But are you ready for the final question? I am. Let's go. He's always ready. Fruits Basket is an anime that features animals from the Chinese zodiac. Which of these animals is not in the Chinese zodiac? A rabbit, a rat, a cat, an ox, or a horse? Oh. Who asked these questions before or after the uh, the uh, the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire episode aired? I'm I'm pretty sure she didn't listen to that. So okay, that okay, really matter. I don't. <sighs> I don't. Mm. Again, the cho I'll read the choices for you again. The choices were, I don't know if it helps you, but uh, rabbit, rat, cat, ox, or horse. Those are the choices gonna, I gave. I, I'm aware that we are about the same age, which means your mother should be younger than my grandmother. I wouldn't count. My on grandmother it. knows the zodiac signs, and she's 70 years old. So I'm going to assume your mother will know just because common it's it's common. So yeah, she'll know. Alright, she knows that the answer is a cat. As is well well founded by the anime fruits basket. Should I lock you in? Yes, 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 yes. Fruits Basket is an anime that features animals from the Chinese zodiac. Which of these animals is not in the Chinese zodiac? A rabbit, a rat, a cat, an ox, or a horse? A cat. That's right. I know my Chinese zodiac. Wow. Well, you know what? We, we don't often have winners here on the podcast. We got a whole, we have a giant mountain of corpses, but uh, we are happy when we do have a winner. And floating eyeball, you have overcome the odds, and so you you're you're going to be getting a fantastic prize. And I'm going to send you a message after the podcast asking you what you would like to have. Um, it could be just about anything you want, so you better think pretty hard. But um, we won too because you gave us great content today. So I appreciate that you called in and had a great microphone, and we're so polite. So thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's been it's been a pleasure, and I hope uh, I hope to hear the rest of the podcast when it comes alive next week. And thanks for listening to our podcast. We appreciate you guys so much. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Wow, man, I love having a winner. He, he not only did he just win, but he won with like believing in your mom. You know, he he wasn't just one of the people who was like, oh, she doesn't know, she doesn't know, doesn't know, playing the game. He knew, and he listened to the tapes, he reviewed, and had a great reasoning for each selection with the whole, you know, mother age time dilation thing with the Zodiac. Like, he, he I love it. I love it. He loved to see a winner. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is nice. Um, it just makes people feel good when there's a winner. And I love I loved it when people feel good. And now he's got a snazzy new role on the Discord, so he uh, he's living large. All right. Well, well, we'll take care of all that behind the scenes. But for now, I think it's time for mailbags. So let's hop to it. Everybody loves a mailbag. It's time for an almighty anime mailbag. 
Anime. Anime. Oh, headbanging. Anime. M -m -m Mailbag. Bag, bag, bag. If, if you, you want to... Like Oh, you go oh, ahead and do go, it. Go, go, my, my man, go right ahead. <laughs> if you insist. <laughs> if you want to leave a mailbag, go over to aaapodcast.com slash mailbag. It's rocket science right there. And uh, we will uh, read your mailbag on the podcast. Now, go ahead, Mason. Why don't you read this one for us? This one comes to us from Sajinther. Hi, AAA hosts. It's sh shit. I can't talk. Sajinther again, messaging from across the pond in little old England. I was wondering of what you have seen... That is the least anime anime that you can think of. The show that goes against the most of the tropes and formulas of what we would consider the regular anime experience that we have come to expect. Also wondering if Caroline will run out of jelly beans before this gets read. Great show as always, Matane. And, Matane, uh, Jane. Jana. Uh, he's a prophet because Caroline ran out of jelly beans last episode. Yeah. And here we are. So... The least anime anime, to kind of cover my bases, uh, a lot of the world masterpiece theater shows, which are adaptations of classical, often European books, are obviously not very anime inspired. They're not based on a light novel or a manga, so they don't have the same anime tropes and feeling that we get from more modern stuff. Uh, it's from like a weird Western edge, talking about the Gainax shows with Aben Obashi, uh, Panty and Stocking and Dead Leaves are pretty absurd in decidedly non-anime ways. Obviously, there are still components and humor mixed in, but it just feels so different. And I'd also give it to, like, gangster shows set in, you know, like, the westernized world, such as Bacchano or 91 Days, etc. Those also all feel very non-anime. But I'm going to give a nod to Technolize because it's such a different oh. experience and punishing and brutal, and it's just different than a lot of other anime. So uh, I'll go with that one. Technolize. That's a fucking yeah. weird anime. It is. It's super weird. Okay. Um, I guess I need to come up with something too. Um uh, there's a lot of anime that just don't feel like they're anime. Monster is a low-hanging fruit. I mean, nothing about that is really anime at all. Space Brothers is not really very anime either. Um pretty much anything done by Isao Takahata is not anime. Like, I think probably the most non-anime anime I can think of is something like Only Yesterday. I mean, it's absolutely not remotely about anime at, at all. Um, doesn't really resemble it. Same with, like, Grave, Grave of the Fireflies. It's not, it doesn't seem like an anime. It just seems like, you know, loosely, uh, like, like, like historical fiction, basically, uh, you know, and... Uh, but these are like gr all of these I've listed are not only are they not like anime at all, but they are phenomenal. Like uh, only yesterday, Grave of the Firefly, Space Brothers, Monster. These are all like S tier anime. They're all amazing. So I mean, you should go watch them. And and uh, but uh, obviously, there's a lot of other stuff that doesn't seem to resemble anime a whole lot. Even something like Gunsmith Cats isn't really doesn't really feel like anime that much. It's mostly just like a cops and robbers show, sort of. So. There's a lot of these out there, so I appreciate the mailbag, though. That was a good one. Oh, boy. Mason, are you ready? Is it time? Are you ready? I'm ready. I don't know how. Is that corn? I don't fucking know. I don't remember who it is. <laughs> um, the Genius Princess Guide to Raising a Nation Out of Debt. Otherwise, just known as the Genius Prince, I think. Uh, I think the light novels are like called the Genius Prince Volume Three or whatever. Uh, came out in winter of 2022. So, are we getting close to being? I mean, good lord, we're still like nursing the winter season, but we're running yeah. out of stuff. There's only one other anime from that from that season left, and it's um, Realist Hero Season Two, which I know you guys are dying which, for. Which, which I, we'll do uh, next week when I'm not fucking here. In fairness, I didn't pass that. So That's true. The listeners pancakes, did. Pancakes walking by me and making lewd gestures. So, interesting. As she does. As she does. Um, so, I passed this on 612, episode, episode 612. Uh, you can watch it in Funimation, which is where I watched it. I'm still waiting for Funimation to just disappear and become Crunchyroll uh, or become Verve. Like, when is this happening? I hope soon. So in this anime, the king of Natra fell ill and left um, his kingdom to his son, Prince uh, Wayne, spelled W-E-I-N. 
Known to be capable and wise, he is the perfect candidate to become the prince. Uh, however, um, the prince, he doesn't really want to rule the kingdom. He'd rather sell the kingdom and uh, to the highest bidder and just like live in the lap of luxury and not have to do jack shit for the rest of his life. Which is kind of what everybody in, in the world wants to do. They just want to like make enough money to retire and then like do nothing. <laughs> That's pretty much the dream. The dream is like, my dream is to do jack shit all day. But, but I'll get to drink high-quality coffee and, like, sit in an armchair. That's, like, what everybody wants to... That's what everybody works all their whole life to do is to just to do nothing. So, um, Prince Wayne wields the authority of the throne, and no one can stop him from doing pretty much whatever he wants. Um, but he needs to raise the value of the kingdom in order to maximize his profits. Like, just like when you're selling a company. Like, nobody... Like, a company that doesn't make any money is not worth anything. So he needs to, like, bring this company back... It's almost like when a venture cap, when like a, a investment, like a capital investment firm buys a company and tries to make it better and then they sell it off later. Um, so anyway, this is done by Yokohama Animation Lab, directed by Makoto Tamagawa, and, in this, and the source material is a light novel. Now, Mason, I yeah. know um, you've seen Realist Hero and you love it a lot. Big fan. But uh, Yeah, big fan. But what were your expectations for this anime when it came before, uh, before watching it? So when you passed it, obviously I was just like, this just is another realist hero. This is going to be bad. But then people in the Discord, they were saying, no, no, like this is, it's like realist hero, but it's it's a lot better. You know, it's it's, it's a lot more interesting. It's a lot more, it's less of an isekai. It's because it's literally not one. So it's better. It's better. It's better. Which is not enough to inspire confidence in the quality but I earnestly believe, I earnestly believe that it couldn't be worse. So I was like, you know what? Let's see the same formula done right. And I was coming in with some optimism to the show, despite my misgivings of its uh, setup. So, you know, I wasn't <laughs> expecting much, but I was saying, hey, at least it can't be as bad. That's really what I was coming in with. All right. Uh, for me, I passed the show. So, I mean, I don't really recall why I passed it. I mean, this is like nine months ago or something at this point. So I just don't have the recollection, but um, I don't think I expected a whole lot. Another political run the kingdom anime. It was probably a really weak season, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I will it note was. that it, it has the same score. It actually has, has a, I think a slightly better score than Ryman's club on my anime list. So I don't know what that says, uh, but the world does not hate this anime at least. Um, but I don't know. I don't think I expected... I think I expected it to be a lot like Realist Hero. So. Um, now, Mason, w now, did you like the anime? What was your what would your spoiler-free recommendation be of this anime? If you had to... If you were... If a friend asked you for an anime like this, would you recommend it? I mean, if someone said, hey, big fan of Realist Hero, what do you got for me? I think you should watch this show. I think it hits a lot of the same notes. Uh... If you don't like Realist Hero, don't watch the show. It is trite, it's forgettable, it's bland, it's abysmal. It's such a bad show. Woo! And I, Abl and I abysmal. Can get maybe why you passed it, because it starts off as like a parody show, where the main character is kind of stumbling his way into success. He will come up with a plan, it'll fail, but he's surrounded by even more incompetent people, so that he couldn't fail even if he tried. And... Maybe that's that little like gimmick wink and a nod of him saying, this is my plan and, and it doesn't work. And he's like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, it's bad, it's bad. But then the other side botches it even worse and he ends up winning. Like maybe that's what the appeal you saw. But for me, this show started off terribly and I so badly wanted to stop watching after episode one. Oh no, episode, and episode one. Two, and episode three, it was, it was so bad. And then it became like this political thriller but it couldn't shake off the shackles <laughs> oh, of an aptitude no. that permeates every element. It was just episode after episode of unfunny, I unclever, suck. unartistic, imaginative suck and schlock. Oh, suck like, and if you, are, if you are a middle schooler, like, I get the appeal. You're like, oh, he's playing 5D chess, but he's not. It's just so devoid of anything oh. of value. It's a, it's a really bad show, guys. Come on. Let's... No, it's... it's <laughs> Don't watch the show, please. <laughs> He's begging you. Uh, please. He's begging please. you not to watch it. Uh, I think it's actually a, a quite a bit worse than Realist Hero. Um, Caroline will find that hard to believe. I think it's worse. Uh, I think Realist Hero, at least, 
like had discussions about, you know, building roads to like move goods and stuff like that and putting defenses on the roads for the monsters. And, you know, like he was trying to run the fucking kingdom like a CEO would, you know, this anime is just a bunch of political crap that doesn't go anywhere, unfortunately. So this is really not good. Um, I don't know, like, there are shows that are about, like, money and serious stuff. Like, if you watched, like, Good As Any, I know I, know I love that show. You know, that show's, like, pretty good for what it does. People don't like it because it's not what they want out of anime, but, like, it's, it does a good job talking about, like, the money ball of baseball. Um, this show doesn't do a good job of, oh, man. Like, it's supposed to be about making this kingdom better so he can sell it for more than it was worth previously. But they don't do a good job. They don't even talk about that in the show. There's not like a discussion about, oh, the kingdom is profitable. It's uh, making so much money. How can we make it even more profitable? So when I sell it, it, you know, become, it's like even worth more to me. No, they don't talk about that. Most of this anime is about like, uh, like wars between kingdoms and like traveling to other countries and schmoozing with like royalty and I just don't think it really gets to the, to, it doesn't get to around to talking about the things that would actually make the kingdom more valuable. And he certainly doesn't seem to do a good job uh, engaging in those activities and explaining it to the viewer in a way that makes sense. So I think that's really an issue. So this anime for me was not very good. It took me a long time to get through it actually, because I kept like, be, I kept like losing interest and then I'd be, and then I'd be on my phone fucking around with arc nights or something and then I'd go, shit, I watched half this episode, and I don't remember anything that happened. Then I had to rewind it, and I'd watch it again. And Mason's nodding. And, like, I'd keep falling asleep at night. Um, and I'm so I think I... Back to that uh, score calculation episode Caroline and I did. How many points you take off every time you <laughs> play Ark Nights and fall asleep and have to rewatch it? That's not I a good wanna... sign. That's not a good sign. Good shows don't make you do that. Yeah, I, I honestly think that, like, this anime probably... Um, Man, it really left me. Like the people that watch, the people that do the analytics on Crunchyroll are like, this fucker watches anime three times in one week. He must love it. No, it's just because I'm asleep in bed and it's playing the whole fucking show. I, I'm, I'm listening to this like bad OP twelve times in my dreams, probably like being haunted by visions of like most horrendous nightmares. Um, but uh, I mean, the Did anime. You, uh, watch the sub or dub. I watched the dub. Okay. Was it as bad as I thought it was? Yes. It okay, because I watched two episodes subbed. I watched one episode dubbed just to hear what it was like. And man, was it not to my liking. I'll just put it that way. No, I mean, you're, I mean, what you're saying is correct. It's, it's not, yeah, it's not, it's not good. Anyway, um, but let's talk more about it, you know, and uh, and and see where this goes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play the spoiler drop. Spoilers are coming! Oh my god! There it is. And now we're gonna talk about this anime in more depth. Um, for what more depth there is to, to discuss about it, I'm just surprised. Like this anime is actually not hated. Like usually when the animes are terrible, they have a bad score on the internet. This anime does not have a bad score. So I yeah, don't I don't get it. I don't understand. Uh, well, you know, I don't know either, but... Uh... <laughs> Have you ever, like, watched an anime and just wanted to vomit? Like, no. literally queasy. That. My body was rejecting the 20 minutes I just spent, and the concept of wasting any more of my time on it was literally painful. My body was just uneasy with what I was going through. It wasn't, like, grotesque or, like, visually, like, unnerving. It was such a waste of time that my body just was breaking down watching this show. Your body was breaking down. I, I couldn't handle it. It was so bad. And I love how everything that happened would happen again, and they would explain it again. Like, the son dying in episode four. We see it happens. They explain it happening as it happens, and then they explained how it happened later. And then it happens again in episode five. And it happens again. Every goddamn plot point gets repeated ad nauseum to make sure, hey, this is what happened. Make sure you don't miss it. This thing happened. Don't forget the thing that just happened. It was it was so, like you say, there was a lot going on, but nothing of value. 
there was just a lot of noise without any content. Yeah. Um, I actually feel like I have a pretty poor recollection of the beginning of the anime because it was just so long since I've seen it. Yeah. Uh, I do appreciate... I will say I did appreciate when they attempted to get into like some of the political intrigue. You know, Game of Thrones was a popular anime. It was all about politics. This anime tried to do the politics. I don't think it did a good job. Um, the well, only Game thing of I, Thrones has really compelling characters, and watching them go at each other from different mindsets and just ways of life is what makes it compelling. Every villain mm-hmm. here was so cartoonishly sinister or shallow and stupid that it was just... <laughs> you just would see them get introduced, and they're like, man, I sure do hate those foreigners. Wow, I do hate people who aren't adhering to my religion, man, I wish I could just kill all the people that don't believe in me. And you're like, okay, he's a bad guy. We get it. And then you just wait five minutes for him to just mess up something. The prince to fall into success again. And you're like, well, that happened. I can't wait for this arc to repeat another three times. Like, what was the point? Did you just like the prince character as well? Like the main character? I mean, he was a a nothing character. Like, there's a little bit to be said. At least he had more of a personality than the guy from Realist Hero. And it's not all about comparing the two. That's not the point of this review. At least he had some sense of, like, hey, like, I'm going to pretend to be really smart, but I'm kind of just a goofball on the side. And I just, like, at least he had something to him. I didn't find him interesting or engaging. All his chess moves were really dumb and poorly communicated and not all that interesting. As we've said a thousand (laughs) times, you can't write a character clever more clever than you like you just can't yeah. make smart characters if you're not smart and i just didn't feel the intelligence factor here wowing me with any of the maneuvers I and mean, that's a big issue isn't it a lot of the time because yeah it's what's t- the I move mean, oh we take a different pe- fork in the road and we wait there and then we go behind them wow what a move like no things just happened and they made you think it was smart because it worked out but it wasn't yeah, I mean, I think the difference, I think this anime attempts to do a lot of the same stuff that, like, Realist Hero did, which was um, a lot of the politics of it. The problem with this anime is that there were other aspects of the show that, that didn't exist in this one that, that made Realist Hero more interesting. And I know you guys hate Realist Hero, right? But Yes, that was, a, I think we both gave it a half out of five. I but for me, Realist was... Hero wasn't that terrible because at least there was the food episode where they had the, the weird like TV show with the food and they were all eating this weird food. And and he was trying to find a way to feed people with a, with a, with unusual food and was using the TV show to advertise it. And I got I understood that. And yeah. then there was and then that later there was the episode where they had the battle with the, with, with the people that were riding the wyverns or whatever. And they were attacking, you know, stuff like that made Realist Hero at least a little interesting. This anime contains none of that. There wasn't any funny Food Network show. There was some battles, but they were pathetically animated and speed lines you mean those out the CG ass. Chess battles. <laughs> like, like at the end, when the big fat like king guy is like fighting on that horse, and that fucking guy wouldn't be able to swing a weapon. He's like four hundred pounds overweight. He'd be like barely breathing. But his name was literally Cheese. Is that what his name was? Well, it's it's not cheese, but like that's what it, it it's a type of cheese. Was Gruyere? it Gruyere? With Gruyere, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, so this but anime he's is fat. Th- that's the joke. He's fat, and uh, uh, ha ha, that's his character. And I get that they try to do like ah, uh, he's actually on their side, but he's actually not on their side because he's just a masochist and to he likes getting in the fights. Like that's. That's not what an interesting character is made out of. Just one trait. No, an interesting character is made out of cheese. Come on. Exactly. If he actually was made out of cheese, then we're talking. I do but like cheese a lot. It's so good. It's La- so good. Last I'd rather... Ni- yeah. Last night, we were going to order food, and I'm like, we don't have any food here. we got to order food. So we're going to DoorDash because we're DoorDashers. And I'm mm. like, we could get Red Robin. But Red Robin wants $40 for two burgers. Nah, and I'm like, fucking nah. ridiculous. $40 for two burgers. I'm like, fuck that. Let's go to Freddy's Steak Burgers, which is basically Steak and Shake. It's like $34. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Now we're at low quality burgers and there's still $34 for two of them. I'm so sad. And then I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's order Taco Bell. So we got a Taco Bell and they had like the Taco Bell deluxe box. 
that had a chalupa, a taco, a drink, a side, and like a and a special and a specialty burrito for like ten ninety nine. And I was like, hell yeah. And the only reason I mentioned this is because every item had like nacho cheese in it. <laughs> it that, like... that Taco Bell box description had more characterization than a lot of the characters in this show. Oh, it was so delicious, Mason. Yeah, I believe it. Taco and, Bell fucking slaps, and, except and, and, the fact that they ruined it with their lack of potatoes. We did get potatoes with the cheese on them. They had that. I, I haven't been to Taco Bell in a while, so... Well, and then we got Stone to watch Friday while we were eating it. So it was pretty fantastic. Um, but yes, uh, this anime, the OP wasn't good. The the ED, I didn't even watch it. I don't fucking know. Um, Can we talk about how freaking garbo the visuals were? They were really, yeah. Yeah, please do. I My favorite was when two characters, they wanted to let you know that they were like communicating through like nonverbal language or like thinking about something. They use this like PowerPoint filter to darken everything on the screen, but like an oval, so you could see like, hey, they're looking at each other. It was just the most lazy things ever. And a lot of times when I I try to make the cover images for these like YouTube or like Twitter, Twitch streams, I look for like a, a moment that is emblematic or notable or interesting to like take a snapshot of to put for the cover. There was nothing for this show. There was nothing. And this isn't even getting into the actual physical animation of the show, which was as choppy as Nikaido making donuts. It was just a, it looked abysmal. It was, it was so bad. It was bad. And I don't want to be this guy saying it's a really bad show. This was bad. This was bad. This was bad. But this is how it was. You just hate. You hate this anime. I. Yeah, I kind of do, and not in a way because it presented characters that were had object objectionable worldviews or that it was overtly over the top with like a harem or fan service. Like those were all there, but it was very mild and bland. And it wasn't like a show that I hated. It was just another show that was so bland and boring and just so lacking in content that it makes it even more despicable than a show that is like full of potential and just flubs it with like terrible characters. Like, you know what I mean? But did you hate this show more than you hated Shield Hero? Um, more than you hated Realist Hero? Because no, no, you, I don't you think still so. dislike Realist Hero more. Yeah, I think they're about about equal. Okay, I think they're about, about equal. equally shitty. Yeah. I mean, but at least this show, at least Realist Hero had like the dragons and stuff like that. I didn't. I don't need. I don't need a fancy fantasy creature to me to be like ah, oh, it's so cool. So cool. Like, the Isekai was very poorly executed in that show. But just because there is an isekai in this one doesn't give it a passing grade. Like, I I can't think of any redeeming factors about this show besides the fact that it was only twelve episodes long and not thirteen. Like, what what was there to the show? What what did people enjoy? I don't watch shows to pass time. Like, was there any clever dialogue? Was there any discussion no. about? Like, what was the best joke when the one girl turns out that she's a princess and she was just wrapping her massive rack to hide it? And he said, wow, boobies was really was that it was that where you're like, ah, I you know what this show is really growing on me. No, 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 the show is not good. I'm trying to think like, um, man, I did like the white haired girl. She was kind of. I don't yeah, know. She, she was she a was little okay. sassy. She had her thing going that was fine she got was discriminated against we got no real reason why we i guess we perceive she's a flam race that that's not liked in the kingdom i'm sure if you read the books you would understand what it means maybe we'll get to it na- later that was never really explained there's some banter with her being like do you like my white hair more or my black hair more and he gets slapped like i like the white hair more for the much? record of, of course of course um I don't know. I guess she was probably one of the better characters out there. Did you like the absolute non-ending where the yes. the the no longer fat cheese king was like, tell me your reason for uh, this conquest. And of course, we hear him say nothing. We just see him mouth it. And the king's like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. This changes everything. But of course, we get none of that. So no, we're it, just was left the, it, it was his beast, his inner beast or something. They, they don't reveal it, though. No, I know. Yeah, we don't like, know what, what his that, inner beast is. Yeah. What does it even what mean? What drives you? Yeah. And Your it inner was like, beast. Is that, 
is that what really is going to sell me on season two? Is that the best cliffhanger you can give me? <laughs> like what? God, is there going to be a season two? There's definitely going to be a season two of this bullshit. What? What was there any part of the show that you got anything out of? Well, were you entertained? My thing is that I don't understand why studios look at shows like this and then decide that this is the anime. This is what they're going to make like their next anime af- after. Because to me, it's like the anime doesn't have a lot of content really that would make it worthy of really having an anime made at all. So that's what baffles me is how to, is, is how does the anime get made in the first place? That's personally, that's where I am. Like what was it that like drove you to decide that this was worthy? To have like millions of like a million dollars spent on having anime made for it. Although this show was probably like more like a hundred grand, <laughs> if that. Honestly, it it didn't look good. It's I guess the voice actors were all right. It sounded good in the uh, in the subtitles. Like they sounded all right there. Um, nah. The political stuff fell through. Yeah. The visuals fell through. The battles yep. fell through. Yep. I hate speed I, lines. I, I, <sighs> Do you prefer when it just gets dark, though, and they just, like, zoom in? They don't even zoom in. They just show people, like, squinting at each other. No, I want them to do what they do in Castlevania, which is animate every single bit of it. Uh, like, Castlevania has, like, sort of the stranger-level fight scenes. I want that. That's what I want. And I and I get we can't get OVA or movie or, like, quality animation all the time. Like... I, I get that. And Why yes, not? the visuals conveyed some of what we needed, but it also like your time listener is worth more than what this show can provide. And just because something works and conveys an idea, doesn't mean it does it well. And that it's, you know, if this, if the show comes up here and says two plus two is four and just repeats math facts for an hour, just because it's objectively hitting the mark, doesn't mean it's, like, if that's what you watch anime for and you enjoy it, great. I'm not going to knock anyone for liking the show. A lot of people do. It's just not for me, and I don't think it did anything of value. Well, we can score it then, I guess, because I don't yeah, have I anything so. else to say, really. I mean, we, we've... And I'm just beat, complaining at this point. We've beaten it up enough. Um, I, I don't often give really, really bad scores. I, mean, I think most anime are at least worthy of getting, like, you know, a two... But this show really didn't really didn't have much to offer. Um, like I, I actually think this show is quite a bit worse than Realist Hero. I didn't think it was even close. Um, I expect more out of Realist Hero's second season, which we're gonna re- which we're gonna review next week. And and you know what? I'm just gonna check and see Realist Hero. I'm just gonna check and see which one of these seasons had a better score. Second season at Realist Hero has a little bit of a better score online, so we'll see. But this show was not as good as Realist Hero. I did not enjoy it. Um, it was tough to get through because it was so boring. It's just so dry. There's not much entertainment value to it. And so I'm going to give it one and a half. Oh, man. What do I even fucking give it? One and a half. Uh, speed lines. Speed li- Pancake Guild speed lines. One and a half speed lines out of five. I hate speed lines. They are so fucking dumb. Speed lines are... are, are, are an admission of the fact that you can't, you can't, or don't have the means to animate the actual action. So you're just gonna draw these fucking speed lines and try to make it up for it. That's what speed lines are. They suck. I hate them. Mason. Yeah, I, I originally had this show at a one out of five, and I was hoping that you would. Give me something more to like justify giving it a one instead of just like a half. But I think there was just enough political twists and underpinnings and passable setups and potential there to go with one. This is an extremely forgettable show mm. out of five. But uh, it's close. It's close to that half. It's. It barely squeaked by, just so I can say it's better than Realist Hero, but it's 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 a race to the bottom here, and uh, nobody wins. Nobody wins. Yeah, I mean it's uh, yeah, it wasn't good, you know. And I and uh, this one's on me, so because I picked it, and I don't even remember I mean, why. People it's like to... it. People like the show. 
I can't recall what it was about it that made me pass it. I I really can't. Um, it's it's been too long, but um, you know I, you know, you win some, you lose some. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that was re- that was uh, Genius Prince raises the kingdom out of debt. Really not a good show. I wouldn't watch it. Uh, next week we're gonna do Realist Hero, season two, and that's gonna wrap up our uh, winter season. Which is I yep. know we're I know we're like way past that, like like five months past winter right now by this point, but and then we're gonna get into spring season, which we've got six anime left from the spring season, and then we're gonna be uh, and then we'll be introducing the fall, you know. So uh, get, so get excited for that, and uh, I'm hoping Realist Hero will be a little bit better. Do we have a topic yet for next week? Oh, uh, we do. We have all our topics set up for a while. Next um, week we're doing. Um, I will. I will die on this hill. Yeah, that was which uh, is uh, <laughs> a Caroline <laughs> Caroline's idea, I think. So yeah, it basically that, ar- that'll be fun. Arguments that you won't, that you won't let go of, or something <laughs> that that you will never bend on. You know, someone comes in and they're saying, "Oh, Gurzani, uh fucking sucks. It's the worst thing ever." And you're like, "No, no. Till the day I die, I'm gonna defend this point." To the day something I die, like you fucking suck. Okay. Yeah, exactly. As good as any is awesome. Exactly. So this is the the show of hot takes that you will never give ground on. You know, I'll fucking die for good as any. Exactly. Yeah. So talk to Caroline because uh, she, I think she's got a bunch in store for uh for us. Oh jeez. So get excited, folks. <laughs> All right. Wow. Okay. Well, and then we're gonna re- yeah. So stick around for that next week, and uh, of course, thanks for thanks to everybody who listened live on uh, on Twitch. We do appreciate you. Mason and I are going to do are going to go to record a hentai episode now. But if you want to follow us, you can do it on Twitter at AAA Podcast. Mason's at Macy Pacey. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on TikTok. Follow us on Discord. If you go to the to the homepage AAAPodcast.com, you can find the Discord button on the top. The Discord is pretty active, you know. I mean, we've got about as of today, we have how many how many people are on the Discord? We've got. 2,400 people on the, on the Discord. One so, billion. One billion dollars. So stick around for that and your liquid hot magma. And we'll see you guys next week <laughs> on the podcast. Thanks so much for contributing. Tell a friend, right? That's the, That was the mission for today. Tell a friend. And we'll see you guys next week. So take care. Bye-bye. Drink some water. Stay safe out oh, there. I definitely Deuces. need some water right now. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>